We are here about 40 minutes outside of Toronto and I came here to do a consultation for one of my really good clients who is building a whole city, I would say. There's over 16 houses being built. Most of them are sold already and now we have four of them to stage for the potential buyers. Let's go inside because we have a lot of work to do. Okay, wow. Very clean looking, this place. I like it. So I guess this is the front foyer and we see the division by the tiling. I don't see any light fixtures. It looks like the builder has kept this space a little bit more clean looking without fuss. No chandeliers, no hanging light fixtures. He did tell me they're putting one here in the living room. So guys, this is a very narrow living room and it's gonna probably be a little bit of a challenge to style and furnish, but we're gonna do it because my inventory is so good right now. He has the best selection for this house. So living room was just back there. Foyer is here. I don't think I can do much in the foyer area other than maybe do like a bench, like a little sitting area here, or even a console to kind of fill up this empty gap here. Um, it's nice to visually fill up dead spaces and this is pretty much dead space because if you leave it alone and you don't furnish it, it's not usable, you're not doing anything with it. And then this is our dining area here. So we don't have any light fixtures to indicate that, but it's right across from the kitchen. And the only thing I'm looking at here is the layout. I think it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge because we need to leave a walking space here that means that I have almost like a square space to work with. If I do a rectangle, it's gonna be a small table, probably six chairs. Or if I have a square in stock, I can do a square. It's a big square where I can do two on each side and have eight chairs. Or I can do a big round with six to seven chairs. We have kind of like an open space here because we have our dining room and directly beside it, we have our family room, which is also a square. A couple of challenges here, one being this is my TV wall and I already see that I have two windows here. Your TV wall would be like a wall unit of some sort. I, I will not put up a TV. The builder asked if he wants me to put a TV up and I said no, just because looking at the photos, I realized that if you do put a TV, it's gonna be way too small. So what I'm gonna do is do a nice long sideboard and have a piece of art here to show a TV wall. And then the home buyers later on can do whatever they choose to do. One of the other recommendations I'm gonna have for him is to put up window treatments here for privacy reasons and also because you want the space to feel a little bit more cozy and private, obviously. As for furniture, again, this is gonna be a little bit of a challenge, but because I'm dealing with a square space and it is a little bit confined, um, so if I do a sectional this way up to here and then leave this as the opening because I do have a post here that I have to work with, and we do need to allow people to walk through. So this will be the opening from here. You will have flow from here. We'll put furniture along this wall here, coffee table, accent chair, lots of accessories, decorative pillows, table lamps, all that fun stuff. We always come across these types of rooms that are open concept. So that means one room leads to another room and there is no division like this room here. We actually did a video recently on open concept spaces. Check it out above. And I know that a lot of homes come with that kind of layout and it is a little bit challenging. Definitely check out that video because it goes through different types of homes that are open concept and you will get to see how we styled it and get inspired. Okay, so the kitchen is really nice and clean looking. I like the finishes, everything is subtle. Nothing really pops at you other than the play of colors, which I also like because it adds dimension to the space. So they've gone with a lot of the white cabinetry and then you have some accents with the dark hood and the upper cabinets with the dark black matte hardware, which I really like. And yes, so we're gonna accessorize this area here. He did tell me that they're doing some lights in the black and brass, and obviously, being a brass lover, 
uh, Hanini developments. I know what you want for the styling here and I'm definitely gonna give it to you. So we're gonna mix our finishes with what we see here and what we see in the house. So then the rest of the kitchen, I have space to do some bar stools here. I'm gonna to try to do something under counter just because this the space here seems a little bit tight. I don't wanna have anything too bulky with a back. So something under, under counter here, backless would be great. And then for this side here, I'm thinking a round table, glass top, four chairs to show a kitchenette area. For all of you stagers out there, I know some spaces in the kitchen seem small, but try to show a sitting eating area just because it's so important to home buyers. I always, when clients challenge me on this, they end up coming back and say, Sanas, bring back the furniture because people are asking for it. It's important, especially if people have kids, they wanna see that they can set up here in the morning, give them their breakfast and that sort of thing. Okay, so now on the second floor. So this house is an average size house that we usually deal with. It's not as big as the most of the custom homes we do or the last project that we did for this builder was probably three times the size of this. But this is special because it's a subdivision. So this is the primary bedroom and I have to show a king bed here. One of the challenges I see is that this is my bed wall and not this, which is the bigger wall because you have a window here. You do not wanna be blocking this window with a headboard. So we have to work with this wall here. And if I do a king, I have about 20 inches on each side for a nightstand, which I will definitely keep in mind and take a note of because I definitely have to show a king for this size house. So I'm gonna create kind of a sitting area, do like an accent chair, accent table beside the door here. What a great balcony. I mean, look at this space here. This is fantastic. It's definitely usable. So maybe we'll even put some patio furniture out here for them. Dress it up with some artwork. Light fixture still missing, but it's coming. It's on its way and it will definitely be installed before we stage the property. And stepping into the primary ensuite. Again, nice clean finishes. I'm gonna try to keep this house a little bit more organic looking just because I see all of the finishes are very clean and subtle. So I'll bring in more of the organic stuff. But again, my client's been asking me for a lot of gold. So we're gonna have to bling it up a little bit, most definitely keep him happy double vanity here, mirrors are to be installed. And I always say to my clients, bring me in at a time where it's almost ready so I can see the finishes because now here I'm seeing a brass mirror. So this is what's going to be going up, it appears, two of these guys, which I mean, it's lovely, it's beautiful. And I'll have to keep that in mind when we're accessorizing the space. There's always that one room that gets you going, hmm, what do I do with this space? This is one of them most definitely because as you see around, there's not many walls other than this one right here. So we're gonna have to do a double bed. Uh, I'm gonna do a double headboard, double mattress is gonna come out, two small nightstands on the side because it is going to be cutting into the entry here. So I would have it start somewhere around here, something small so it's not intrusive with the entry, the walking space. We wanna have a flow so people will most likely walk around this way, the bed. If I can and if I have space, I might add a desk here because again, this is gonna be a child's room. They're gonna need their working station, so they're doing homework or you know any arts or crafts or whatnot. So we want to create a nice mood for the space that it's a usable space, it's practical. It's not just for a bed, but we can put in some other fun stuff. Hi guys, it's been five days since we were last here. My team just left, so I'm excited to show you around. Come on inside. All right, so if you remember, the house is very contemporary looking, very clean looking, and we spoke about the aesthetics that I was going for. And luckily enough, in my inventory, I had every single piece that I wanted to use here. Starting with a foyer, we're standing in the foyer right now. We didn't have a lot of room to play around with. 
So we stuck with doing the two mirrors in front of the door. It kind of gives you a nice opening when you walk into the door and you have something in front of you, either artwork or mirrors, something like this, because it creates contrast, especially when you're in subdivision homes or newly built homes and everything is white, you want to create interest. So this is the perfect way to do it in front of the door. First impression gives the best impression. So then to our left over here, we have the living room. And if you remember, I was talking about how it was a little bit of a narrow room, a little bit of a challenge just because we had this break off here and with my team, we were FaceTiming while they were at the warehouse just trying to figure out exactly what to bring. I wanted to do my chaise here, which they brought. It didn't work out and the reason for it is the chaise was actually half of it was covered by the sofa. So even though we used smaller pieces, like a more linear, narrow coffee table, obviously so that there's flow walking from the front of the room to the back of the room. But at the same time, we wanted to have ample seating area. I ended up doing the sofa with two accent chairs, which I love. They're all kind of in the same color scheme. The sofa is a dark gray. The accent chairs are in also like the gray and a herringbone finish, two different ones. I like to keep the interest going. Not everything has to be matchy matchy. You can do different pieces in one room and create more interest and more dimension that way. A coffee table is a marble top, again with the gray veining, keeping the flow of the colors kind of moving through the room. My artwork, I decided to do a little bit more neutral, again, white with the grays. It's a modern house, and even though this is the formal living room, you still want it to be formal enough, but contemporary clean looking. Then we have our accent tables, which I continued the marble theme with the accent table, with the coffee table, and then on this side we have our cement table with another marble piece here. We finished everything off with some beautiful accessories. Guys, don't forget, accessories are so important in a room. They create interest, they create warmth. Finished off this room perfectly. Again, there's flow from the beginning to the end. Nothing really stops you. You don't want to stop the room to cut it short. So everything just kind of uniformed and nicely put together. All right, so this is our gorgeous dining room. And again, I said that I wanted to keep things organic. I was not kidding. Even our dining table is made of real wood. And actually what's cool is they put a piece of glass over it so that you can actually put stuff on it because underneath it, it's all kind of staggered with the, with the tree bark. So we ended up doing our barrel back chairs here, gray, light color, very neutral, very clean looking, contemporary, but yet elegant at the same time because it has the little gold shoes at the end. One thing we're missing here, and I always say this to my builders, is put light fixtures where needed. And here I feel like it was needed because we have a big open ceiling, this big open concept space, but there's nothing really grounding it. And this is the difference that you'll see between my projects that have lights in the dining room and the ones that don't. This is the feel you get without it. I definitely want to know what you guys think. If you guys think you're more towards light fixtures in a dining room or no, you don't need a light fixture and you think this is perfectly fine. I mean, we do have a lot of pot lights, but again, the purpose of a chandelier, a drop down piece is to ground the room. So like this, there is no division. And then obviously we did our gorgeous, very popular, I must say, bowls with the moss. This is the white version. I'm not sure if we ever filmed uh, a project with the white bowls that we have, but these are the white version. You guys usually see the black ones. I like these because again, it's open, it's airy. It was in stock, I brought it. So that was our good luck there. Right behind us, we have the family room. This room turned out so beautiful. I love this. This sectional, guys, this is my modular piece I always talk about. We have linked it on Like to Know It. We found something very similar to it. This one is custom made, but the one on Like to Know It is the closest one we have found to it, and it is modular. So you can play it around like this. Here, we used it like a sofa piece, whereas in other projects, you have seen it as a sectional. So now you get a feel for how you can move around it with different spaces. We did two of our black ottomans 
is on this side, just to the left of the sofa, kind of facing what would be considered our fireplace wall or our TV wall. Console table, nice piece of artwork, some accessories to really add some glam to the space. And then we have our single piece armless modular sofa here. So this is a piece of that. However, we decided to use it as a chair. Again, keeping it very modern, clean looking. Our coffee table, I love. I think this is a beautiful piece. It's actually new in our inventory and um, it has a marble top with a brass base. We topped it off with our beautiful Vanity Fair coffee table book, some gorgeous accessories, flowers. I really like this room. I think it has everything and it shows ample seating, the color coordination, everything flows from the living room side of the house into the family room. And now off to the left of me is the kitchen breakfast area. So this layout is a typical subdivision layout, which I like, but you definitely do need a breakfast area, need to show the table and chairs. We were able to do a round table with four chairs around it, kind of airy chairs. You don't want to do anything too bulky to take up too much space or show that the space is too small. So you want it to be something that shows enough seating, but look wise, it kind of blends in with everything else. So we opted to go with the white ultra suede fabric. Gorgeous island. We put our accessories, again, more organic pieces. I didn't want to do too much blingy pieces in here. I wanted it to be nice and neutral, yet with the exception of having the gold because that was special request by my client. Guys, I want to show you these beautiful candles here. So these candles were given to us by this lovely company. They have the most stunning scent, I have to say. We have them at our warehouse and every time you walk by this one area, you get a whiff of this. It's such a nice, soft, spa-like smell with a tinge of floral to it, I would say. Maybe like a, like a blossom of some sort. Uh, and then, the shapes, I mean, I, I'm all about this. I think these are so, so, so lovely. It's by Aram Lux Candle. They're local here in Toronto area, so definitely look out for them if you are on the market for candles. I love these. I think they work out so well here on our kitchen island. My team did a fantastic job staging this property, I have to say. Love everything. Everything turned out exactly the way that I had envisioned it. So we have our king size bed on this side of the wall. Remember how we were talking about all of the windows? We did two wooden distress nightstands with the brass details. And I continued the same brass details into the table lamps. I wanted to do two nice pieces of artwork here and I had the perfect ones in my inventory because I love how these feathers actually complement the headboard and the pillows at the same time. Everything just flows in so nicely together, guys. You will see these colors. There's unity between everything that's happening in this room right now. And this room is really giving me good vibes. In front of the bed, we did a nice bench. I have these added to my inventory. I really like these ball pillows. I feel like they work well. Um, you can use them really in any space, but I feel like they're kind of appropriate for bedrooms. And then we have a nice little sitting nook on this side. I felt like when you walk in through the door here, this would be right in front of you. So I wanted to create a little nook kind of to look at something interesting when you walk upstairs. We kept the black and white theme going of what was already here in the bathroom and we added our towels and some black and white artwork. I really like this bathroom. I don't feel like there was much needed. Just a little bit of accents like towels and flowers. Again, natural looking flowers, just to keep that whole modern look going. These tiles here, they're all very veiny and black and white and it's very busy. So I didn't want to really add to that. So just kept everything nice and neutral in here. Well, that completes our home tour. I hope you enjoyed this video of going through the process from consultation to the final stage. It was a lot of fun staging this project. I'm sure it's gonna sell really quick because there are three other ones after this that we have to sell for our client. And guys, if you haven't already, check us out on Instagram, at stylewithsanas, like, comment on this video, and wait for the next one. It's coming out next week. See you then.